Well, good evening. Good to see you tonight. So glad that you are here. Uh, special evening. We're going to have a time of praise tonight and then uh, opportunity for the Lord's Supper. And if you have uh, need of the Lord's Supper tonight, there's packets on the table as you enter the room. You can slip back and get those before, before too long. But we'll sing uh, maybe three songs before communion, four songs before communion. Have time for Lord's Supper, and then Zachary Jones is our guest preacher for the evening. I want to remind you that uh, next Sunday afternoon, after our morning service, is our congregational meeting. We'll vote on the 2022 budget, which is posted on the bulletin board. Also on the bulletin board is a sign-up sheet for any of you that might be interested in participating in the meal ministry. If somebody's um, ill or hospital bound or wherever it may be and we need to take food into the family. Um, we have an opportunity to do that, so sign up if you would like to participate in that ministry. A um, couple prayer concerns in particular tonight, Jim McGuire and Jeff Williamson, just continue to pray for them, as well as Wyatt Dignette. He'll have surgery on his leg. He has a, a bone chip on his leg and uh, they're going to take care of that on Thursday. So I'll go ahead and pray, turn it over to Matt and Eliza, and uh, let's stand together. Go to the Lord in prayer and worship. Oh, Father God in heaven, we give you thanks. You're a holy God, and uh, we're grateful for the opportunity we have this evening to celebrate the work of Christ, the opportunity, Lord, we have to worship in song. And Father, uh, listen to Zach preach. We pray your blessing on him, that you'll help him as he's studied and prepared, and uh, uh, Father, just help him as he shares the gospel with us. Father, we thank you for Matt and Eliza, and pray your blessing on them as they lead us in worship tonight. We thank you for all you've provided for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening, everybody. We're going to sing a few new ones, and we're going to sing a few that we've all heard before, so this should all go okay. All right, here we go. I see the King of glory Coming on the clouds with fire The whole earth shakes The whole earth shakes I see His love and mercy Washing over all our sin The people sing the people sing Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. I see a generation rising up to take their place with selfless faith, selfless faith. I see a new revival stirring as we pray and seek. We're on our knees. On our knees, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the it clean open up my eyes to the things unseen show me how to love like you have loved me Hosanna 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 in the highest Jose. 
God is able, He will never fail, He is Almighty God, greater than all we seek, greater than all we ask, He has done great things, lifted up, He defeated the grave, raised to life. Our God is able, in His name we overcome, for the Lord our God is able. God is with us. God is on our side, He will make a way, far above all we know, far above all we hope, He has done great things, lifted up, He defeated the grave, raised to life, our God is a overcome for the Lord our God is able God is with us He will go before He will never leave us He will never leave God is with us, He has open arms, He will never fail us, He will never fail us, lifted up, He defeated the grave, raised to life, our God is able, in His name we overcome, for the Lord our God is able, for the Lord our God is able, for the Lord our God is sorrows, Lamb of God, by His own betrayed, the sin of man and wrath of God has been on Jesus laid, silent as He stood accused, beaten, mocked, and scorned, bowing to the Father's will, He took a crown of thorns. Oh, that rugged cross, my salvation, where your love poured out over me. Now my soul cries out, hallelujah, praise and honor unto thee. Sin of heaven, God's own Son, to purchase and redeem, and reconcile the very ones who nailed Him to that tree. Oh, that rugged cross. 
trust my salvation where your love poured out over me now my soul cries out hallelujah praise and honor unto thee now my debt is paid it is paid in full by the precious blood that my jesus spilled now the curse of sin has no hold on me whom the sun sets free oh it's free indeed oh that rugged cross my salvation where your love poured out over me now my soul cries out hallelujah praise and honor unto thee see the stone is rolled away Behold the empty tomb. Hallelujah, God be praised. He's risen from the grave. Oh, that rock and cross my salvation. Where your love over me now my soul cries out hallelujah praise and honor unto thee praise and honor unto cried out from blood satisfied her hunger was billows calmed on raging seas for the souls of men she craved now sun and moon from balcony turned their head in disbelief her precious love would taste the sting disfigured and disdained on friday a thief on sunday a king Laid down in grief, but woke with the keys of hell on that day, firstborn of the slain, the man Jesus Christ laid death in his grave. Oh, 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 oh. oh. So three days in darkness slept the morning sun of righteousness But rose to shame the throes of death and overturn his rule Now daughters and the sons of men would pay not their dues again The debt of blood they owed was rent when the day rolled anew On Friday a thief on Sunday a king laid down in grief but woke with the keys of hell on that day firstborn of the slain the man Jesus Christ laid death in his grave oh 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 oh
says he paid our wages one time, once and for all. On Friday a thief, on Sunday a king laid down in grief, but what? On that day, firstborn of the slain, the man Jesus Christ laid death in his grave. This morning, there's packets back at the table as you came in. Uh, this evening, we're going to speak from John 15, 4. I've titled this, Life with God. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Isn't the Christian life supposed to be more exciting than this? I long for God's joy in my daily life. I long for the, the peace and trials. I long for his love and kindness to flow through me. I long to see God's moments and miracles beyond my own abilities. I wondered what I was pretty confident that God had promised for my life in his word. Questions. I'm embarrassed to admit, I often saw God like a cashier handing out tickets. I just had enough for some joy and a little peace. And when I used them up, I would go back for more. But to my surprise, my attempts to chase those blessings still left me sad, anxious, annoyed, and, bo and bored. Has anybody ever here ever felt that way? We cross a point in our life sometimes where we look for answers like that. And the worst part, I assumed that when life felt less than, that something wasn't wrong with me, but it was something was wrong with God. I even questioned his very word because it didn't seem true in my life. One day over time, sitting by myself, I realized the good life isn't from God, but it was with God. What a gracious God we do that we get to do life with. A fulfilling, abundant life that's found when we quit searching for it and start seeking him alone. Matthew 6.33 tells us, to, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. As I started letting this sink into this idea, I saw it everywhere in the scriptures. John 15, 4, abide in me and I in you. Psalm 16, 11, you make known to me the paths of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. It's God's presence that transforms our days. It's God's presence that transforms our lives. Doing good with God isn't just a good thought, but we need to make it real each and every day. We pursue God's presence all around us. Doesn't that look like pray, praying without ceasing? Include him in our thoughts and our communications each and every day with him. Live your life with God and rejoice in his presence always. Jesus went to the cross so that we might have a closer walk with thee. In John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. Let's bow in prayer. Most gracious and kind Heavenly Father, Lord, life's difficult sometimes. And we try to outrun you. And Lord, we need to stop and slow down and know that you are God. Lord, we know you're present with us each and every day, and that if we allow you, Lord, that you'll take the reins and guide us through this life, but we need to stay obedient to your word. 
We need to reach out to you in our thoughts and our prayers each and every day. We need to share you, Lord, with our community and our brothers and sisters. Lord, we thank you for the precious blood of Jesus that as he went to the cross and died for each one of us. Lord, we're so thankful for all the many blessings you bestow upon us each and every day. For it's in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Good evening. Good evening. The Roman Catholic Church in the 1500s, for money for their building projects, sold certificates to, to people deceiving them, saying that these certificates will save you or your dead relatives from hell. People believed that by a certificate, by their work, they would have salvation. We as Christians would disagree. Although, are works still relevant? Tonight I'll be speaking on the old law of works, when it ended, and how works relate to our faith. If we were Jews during the time of the old law, we would have to follow not just 10 commandments, but over 600 laws. In James 2, 10 reads, For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. If a Jew broke any one of the more than 600 laws, then he or she would be guilty of all of them. It would need cleansed. And the way the Jews were forgiven of their sins was by the sacrificial system. In the temple, the priests annually offered animal sacrifices to God. And Galatians 3, verse 19, explains why the law was added. And that's because of transgressions, which is another word for sin. The law was given so that the Israelites would know what to do and what not to do. The law was of works. The law was intended for the well-being and safety of God's people, the Israelites. Just like the Israelites had rules, at Camp Wakatamaka, there are rules. One of them is if you need to go somewhere, you tell a staff member. During swim time at the pond a few years ago, I wanted to change to dry clothes. I went up into the porter pot without telling any faculty. When I was done, I opened the door and found that I was all alone at the pond. I broke a rule and I thought I had been abandoned. It could have been dangerous for younger me to be alone down at the pond. God once was best for us. His rules are meant for our good. We cannot keep all of God's rules, but God still cares for us. In Romans 3, 21 through 27, we'll see that God's righteousness has been manifested apart from the law of works and where it has been manifested. So Romans 3, 21 through 27. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe for there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be, re be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. Sorry, I lost my place. God's righteousness revealed, was revealed when Jesus, like a lamb led to the slaughter, died on the cross. And continue on in verse 26. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By law of works? No, but by the law of faith. What's the difference between the law of works and the law of faith? Turn your Bibles to Galatians 3, 10 through 14. Yeah. 
For all who rely on works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things, written in the book of the law, and do them. Now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law, for the righteous shall live by faith. Justification simply means acquit or made righteous. We cannot be made righteous before God by the law, and verse 12 explains this. But the law is not of faith, rather the one who does them shall live by faith. We cannot be made righteous before God by the law because it does not require faith. It says in verse 11, the righteous shall live by faith. There could, have, there could have been people who knew the law, did the works of the law, but were faithful to God, weren't faithful to God, and didn't have that relationship with him. And moving on to verse 13. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree, so that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. The opposite of justification is condemnation. Instead of God condemning mankind by sending us to hell for all have sinned, he sent Jesus to earth, and Jesus was crucified, an innocent man was buried, and three days later rose from the dead to just justify or make righteous those who have believed and confessed that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God, repented and been baptized. And right before Jesus said his last words and breathed his last, Luke 23 45 reads that the curtain of the temple was torn in two. This is when the law ended. And when Jesus rose from the dead, he established the law of faith. Our works relevant to our faith. Turn your Bibles to James chapter 2, verses 14 through 26. James 2, 14 through 26. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works. And I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one. You do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? Works are re relevant to our faith because without them, our faith would be dead. Works prove our faith. If we want to be faithful to God, we would do works that he has commanded us to do. For example, spreading the gospel. Otherwise, we'd be hypocrites of our own faith. Verse 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? Isaac was Abraham's promised son from God. God commanded Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. Abraham went up to a mountain, got wood, set Isaac on the wood, and raised his knife to kill Isaac. But God stopped Abraham and provided a ram instead. In a sense, Abraham mentally had already sacrificed his son. It was by Abraham's works he was justified, but those works were out of faith to God. His works proved his faithfulness to God. Uh, continue on in James chapter 2. Twenty-two. You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by his works. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness, and he was called a friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. And in the same way, was not Rahab the prostitute justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way? For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. Why do works not save? 
Turn your Bibles to Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We are not saved by our works, but for good works. Our works prove our faith, complete it, and keep it alive. Jesus kept the law perfectly, so that by grace we are saved by becoming a Christian. Hebrews 4.15 says, But one, Jesus, who in every respect was tempted as we are, yet without sin. The people of the Catholic Church that I mentioned earlier believed that the price they paid was for tickets to heaven from what the Catholics had said deceitfully. Jesus paid the ultimate price by bearing our burdens on the cross, a price that none of us could have paid for he was perfect and we are not. But Jesus came to earth in the form of a baby, lived about 30 years without sinning. He was crucified, manifesting his righteousness, buried in a tomb. Three days later, he rose from the dead, establishing our faith. Forty days after Jesus' resurrection, he ascended into heaven, giving the hope of eternal life with him for all faithful Christians when he returns or if death beforehand. It's only through Jesus can anyone have salvation. If you're not a Christian and you've studied the scripture and you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and want to be baptized for the forgiveness of sins and the Holy Spirit, why wait? That's all, folks. To make that uh, known that they're going to enact their faith, we are going to provide that tonight. Um, Zach can even baptize you. He lives close enough. He doesn't mind getting wet, right? But hey, would you stand with us? We're going to an invitation song, then we'll have a closing, and then another song.
Cause he lives I can face tomorrow Because he lives All fear is gone Because I know Dave, do I still have my job? <laughs> yeah, well, that's a, it's a good place for the church to step in. Situations like that when people are hurting. Uh, it's one of our missions as a church, right? But you know, on a bright note, it is a good time to be here at Millwood. And if you wonder why, if you can't think of any other reason, it's because we've got young guys like Zachary and many others who are willing to get up and preach the truth, whether it's here, in the schools, in their homes, or with their friends. They are willing to stand up for the gospel and Christ as their Savior. So I'm thankful to be here at Millwood. Thankful for the talent, and I'm thankful for the, for the boldness. I thank you for the support that you guys have. And, fourthly, I'm thankful for the pie we're going to have tonight. <laughs> Yeah, so we're going to close. Uh, we're going to have a time of prayer, and they're going to have a song. I don't know exactly what I'm going to pray for. Uh, maybe the Lord will see uh, to give us grace in this moment, turn the, the pie into carrots on the way down so we can have more of it, right? Close with me in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for who you are. We thank you for the God that you are, that you reign over everything. And that you've created everything to bring glory to you. And that you've looked at us and that though we were not worthy, you sent your son so that when you look at us, you can see us as what, uh, worthy by clothing us in your son. I thank you for Zach Jones. I thank you for the message that he preached from your word. And uh, Lord, I ask that we all start living like what he preached was true. And that people can know that we have faith in you as our God and our Savior because of the way we live. I thank you for all those who are coming together tonight to make this happen. And I thank you for every soul that has been impacted by your word. We love you and thank you and come to you through your son, Jesus Christ. And in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You lay down your life That I would be set free Whoa. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory. Who rules the nations with truth and justice? Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross you lay down your life 